A Tesla co-founder aims to build an entire U.S. battery industry. There is a huge gap in the electric vehicle industry, friends, and also all the batteries mainly made in Asia. Redwood Materials, led by J.B. Straubel, a Tesla co-founder, is planning a massive new factory to move 25 billion dollars of the battery supply chain from Asia to the United States. Welcome back, dear friends. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. If you are here first time, please subscribe to our channel for daily Tesla news and give us thumbs up, please. Tom Rondal has the details in Bloomberg saying Redwood Materials, the battery recycling company created by Tesla co-founder J.B. Straubel, has been keeping a big secret. It isn't really a recycling company. Sure, Redwood has risen quickly to become the biggest lithium-ion battery recycler in the United States, but Straubel didn't leave Tesla in 2019 just to clean out America's junk drawers. His brother, broader goal, described to Bloomberg for the first time, is to move a huge chunk of battery component industry from Asia to the United States. Here is a quote. It's both inspiring and terrifying to see so many nations and car companies announcing their shift to electric vehicles, Straubel said. But there is a massive gap in what needs to happen. To fill that gap, Straubel has set out to build one of the largest battery materials factories in the world. Redwood, which currently operates three facilities in Nevada, is searching for a location farther east to build a new million square foot factory at a cost of well over $1 billion. According to Straubel, the addition will enable Redwood to become a major U.S. producer of cathodes Every battery has two electrodes, an anode and cathode, between which trillions of charged lithium atoms travel in the cathode that largely determine the battery's cost, performance, and environmental footprint. Straubel says the U.S. factory will produce material for 100 gigawatt hours of batteries a year by the end of 2025. That's enough for about 1.3 million long-range vehicles a year, on par with the biggest producers in Asia. By 2030, the same facility will ramp up to 500 gigawatt hours a year, he says, at today's prices, that's $25 billion of cathodes a year. Redwood plans to build a similar operations in Europe by 2023. If I am not mistaken, the Giga Berlin's battery factory will be 250 to 300 gigawatt hours of capacity when it reaches the full capacity. But like I said, Tesla co-founder Straubel says the U.S. factory battery factory will produce material for 100 gigawatt hours, and when it reaches capacity by 2030, the same facility will ramp up to 500 gigawatt hours of year, he says. So think of twice of Giga Berlin's size in terms of production capacity in 2030. But who knows, by 2030, Tesla may have other battery factories and how much the demand will grow for electric vehicle batteries and battery components by 2030. Here's another quote I want to share you, friends. These numbers sound insane, but when you look at what the market needs, I'm like, how is this even aggressive enough? Straubel says, somebody's got to do this. In fact, we need at least four companies doing similarly aggressive, crazy things all in the same timeline, he said. Electric vehicles make up just 4% of passenger vehicle sales today. But the big flip is coming. At least 15 countries and 31 cities have announced timelines to entirely phase out sales of internal combustion vehicles, beginning with Norway in 2025. Last month, U.S. President Joe Biden signed an executive order targeting half of U.S. auto sales to be electric by 2030. General Motors, the biggest U.S. automaker, has pledged to electrify all of its vehicles by 2035. These electric vehicle promises are predicted on the economic force of falling battery prices. Every time the global supply of batteries doubles, <coughs> the price of making them drops out 18%, according to data tracked by Bloomberg NEF. 
It's a learning curve driven by large investments in battery manufacturing like Tesla's battery gigafactory in Nevada. There is one glaring exception to this rule, battery materials. China accounts for more than 80% of global production of battery components and materials, BNEF data shows. While planned new battery factories in the United States and Europe will help challenge Asia's dominant role, they'll remain dependent on the region with huge new investments in basic battery components. Straubel left Tesla in part because of his growing alarm over a looming choke point in the global supply chain. Car companies were finally paying attention to battery manufacturing, he said, but were less interested in the less uh, interesting components that go into the batteries. Redwood is pursuing three types of operation. Recycling manufacturing copper foils for anodes and producing cathodes. Recycling is done at headquarters in Carson City, Nevada. The company recently broke ground on a 100-acre site in Store County, Nevada to make the delicate copper foils a component in short supply. A cathode factory will be its biggest endeavor by far, Straubel says. The company's target of 100 gigawatt hour in 2025 means it can no longer rely on recycled materials alone. Unlike some consumer electronics, there is a long lag between when electric cars are made and when their batteries are ready to be recycled. The reuse of packs in secondary applications can delay that further. Today, electric cars account for less than 10% of Redwood's recycling stock. We're going to push the recycled percent as high as possible, but that is really going to be dependent on the availability of recycled materials, Straubel said to Bloom. If we end up consuming 50% of more of virgin raw materials, that's fine. In the decade to come, Straubel is confident that recycled materials will be used for close to 100% of the world's battery production. Recycling is already profitable, he said, in, and eventually companies that don't integrate recycling with refining and production won't be able to compete on cost. Challengers are equally confident uh, in the outlook, including Worcester, Massachusetts-based Battery Resources Incorporation, Canada startup Li Cycle Holdings Corporation, and industry incumbents like China CM Co. Redwood Materials into uh, Redwood is actually moving into cathode production is a major development for the electric vehicle industry. Here is why. According this is according to BNEF analyst James Firth. Not only is the cathode the biggest driver of cost, but it's the most polluting part of battery production. Consolidating the supply chain in the United States and the technological improvements that will come with it will dramatically reduce emissions from battery production. This is a really very good news, friends, because battery production comes with an environmental cost. And now, as we're learning, consolidating the supply chain in the United States and using the technology improvements that come with it will dramatically reduce emissions from battery production and make battery production more cost effective. It would be one of the biggest cathode fa facilities in the world, Fritz said. If you are getting rid of that long supply chain and you're not having to do as much virgin refining, you're cutting a huge chunk out of those emissions. While components wait for the first big wave of electric vehicles to reach retirement, consumer electronics provide a surprisingly effective substitute. For example, batteries from consumer electronics contain considerably higher level of cobalt, one of the most expensive and controversial input for batteries. It would take 6,147 recycled iPhone batteries, uh, batteries to provide enough lithium for a Tesla Model Y, but just 166 iPhones to provide enough cobalt according to BNEF calculations. Straubel says there is so much cobalt in old electronics, Redwood will always produce more from recycling than it needs for manufacturing. Somewhat counterintuitively, building electric cars produces more pollution than building gasoline-powered cars due to the high energy requirements for battery production. Electric vehicles, however, are so much more efficient to operate 
they more than make up for their starting deficit over the life of the car, even in places where most electricity comes from coal. In the United States, it takes about 16,000 miles of driving before an electric vehicle becomes a net positive for the environment, or roughly a year and a half of car ownership for the average American driver, according to Bloomberg and year. But still, that's good, because if you buy an electric car after a year and a half, you are net positive when it comes to net uh, environment. Redwood's plan would nearly cut that half, according to Fried consolidating the supply chain in the U.S. and using 50% recycled materials would cut the emissions from battery pack manufacturing by at least 41%. When anyone drops off of old mobile phone or laptop at a Best Buy recycling center, it goes to Redwood. So does any scrap when Panasonic makes battery cells for Tesla at the Nevada Gigafactory. Since Straubel left Tesla, Redwood has taken over more than half of the US market for lithium-ion battery recycling. It struck battery waste deals with Amazon, electric bus maker Proterra, Specialized Bicycle Components Incorporated, and importantly, an executive deal with the largest electronic consolidator in North America, Electronics Recycling Services. After collection, Redwood disassembles, shreds, burns, and mixes materials in a slurry to separate out the valuable nickel, lithium, cobalt, and copper. More than 95% of the core battery materials are recycled, according to Redwood. The resulting powders then wind their way back through a supply chain, building batteries. Before Redwood, most U.S. recycling shops simply ground up the batteries into a crude powder known as black mass for easy transportation and then ship those materials overseas to be refined and processed, according to Jeffrey Sprandenberg, director of Department of Energy's Resale Center. Center for battery recycling research. That's better than not recycling at all, but it still takes a heavy environmental toll and doesn't reduce dependence on foreign suppliers. We want to buy these materials once and then keep them here, Sprungenberger said. The recycler and the manufacturer together, if that can be done under one roof, then we're answering two questions at once. There is a reason Straubel is being listened to, even when making dramatic forecasts for what is an embryonic, um, embryonic industry with a still uncertain growth trajectory. He was the mastermind behind Tesla's battery strategy from the first time Elon Musk approached him following an engineering talk at Straf uh, Stanford University in 2003. When Straubel left Tesla, he brought along Kevin Kasekert, another key confidant of Elon Musk, as chief operating officer of the new company. Kasekert was in charge of building Tesla's sprawling battery gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada. Kasekert was responsible for finding the site, building the factory, and hiring most of the people who operated it. Now, he aims to do the same thing for battery materials at Redwood. In 2013, there wasn't any major battery manufacturing in the United States, Kasekir said. Fast forward eight years, and there is not a lot of battery component manufacturing in the United States. We're focused on filling that void. Since it's a new industry for the U.S., Kasekert and Straubel have been piercing together a workforce from around the world. Redwood opened small offices in Norway and Japan. Recent hires include Alan Nelson, a former chief technology officer at Johnson Matthew Pliggs, a British chemical company where he built a cathode business. Koichi Ichinose spent more than three decades at Dow Chemical and at Albemarle Corporation, the biggest lithium winner. And David Osaka was a senior director at research and development at Sun Power Corporation, where he worked for 11 years ramping solar cell energy. So as you can see, Redwood is putting together a very good team. Redwood has raised roughly $740 million in two investment rounds since 2020. Investors include Goldman Sachs Asset Management, Amazon's Climate Pledge Fund, and Bill Gates Breakthrough Energy Ventures. A $700 million capital raise in July valued Redwood at about $3.7 billion. 
Straubel declined to disclose to Bloomberg the size of his personal stake. He was a major investor in each funding round. This is fun and rewarding to me. It's where I want to invest. The company's next step, he said, will require significantly more money than they have raised so far and options are being explored. But he's not ready yet for an initial offering of stock. It's not off the table, but we prefer to grow the company in other ways for a little bit longer. Well, friends, this is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Let me know your thoughts on moving entire battery Produce component industry from Asia to United States by Redwood and Straubel. What do you think? How do you think Tesla and electric vehicle industry will benefit from this? Please subscribe to our channel for daily Tesla news. Ring the bell so you don't miss my next coverage. And I'll see you soon in our next report. Please give us like and thumbs up for this report. Peace be with all of you and God bless you all.